the resource that we currently do, uh, currently employ to manage um, the flow of patients not only around the ED but through the hospital um, in a much better way. We have supernumerary shift coordinators, uh, band aid nurses, uh, we have ED consultants that are supernumerary to a shift purely employed to try and balance the level of risk across the organisation for all types of patients that are being treated within it. Um, and, the, and the proposal that we see here would allow us to redeploy that resource to concentrate much more on those high acuity patients in particular, the management of patients around by ambulances. Um, it's a sad reality that ambulance queues do occur as a regular um, occurrence to uh, Arrow Park and some of that is down to resource in managing and sometimes we up to 100 patients at any one point in time in the patient in, in the department. So for us, this is a, um, a welcome proposal, and we believe it offers a benefit for us in secondary care, um, but then it also offers an uh, reduced risk in the community in terms of improving the ambulance response times. Thank you. Do you have any questions, please? <coughs> So uh, as everybody else has been required to declare interests, um, my name is Simon Banks, I'm the Chief Officer of World Health and Care Commissioning and of NHS World Health and Commissioning Group. I have no pecuniary interest in the NHS, although my partner works for NHS Holt and CCG as a senior pharmacist. Um, I'm going to hand over to Paul and Jackie to uh, furnish you with additional detail. Um, as we are only able to provide clarification and respond to issues of evidence and fact during the consultation uh, and not provide an um, opinion. I will then summate at the end in terms of the closing statement. Thank you, Simon. Can everybody still hear me? Um, and you'll probably notice from my accent that unlike some of the other people who've spoken here this evening, um, I wasn't born in Wirral or even Liverpool. But my son it was born in Arrow Park Hospital 10 years ago, and I'm a GP working here for the past 15 years, and I'm passionate about the delivery of health and care in Wirral. And to that end, I welcome these discussions. Whilst they may be uncomfortable at times for people, and they may be slightly heated, these types of discussions are essential so that we can shape and deliver the proper and most appropriate services for our patients. We can all leave here this evening knowing that we tried our best to get our points across. And whether I agree with all of the points made here, that really isn't the issue. The issue is that we have an opportunity to discuss and to shape the services we deliver for our patients. Mrs. Hodgson said, and I'll read the quote because I wrote it down, these places are needed where the patients are and not at our park hospital. And Mr. Grice said, they should be cited where they live. And I fully agree with that. And that's what's within these proposals is that we have situated services in the four localities of Wirral. The, the urgent treatment centre is for those people who have an absolute urgent need. The four other areas on the four, whatever we call them, hubs or clinical wellness centres, are based in the localities, close to where patients live, so that they can be accessed easily. I understand fully that patients don't have cars. I understand fully the issues of transport I understand fully the inequalities in Wirral. It's 20 by 10 miles, and if you're born on one side of the motorway, you live 10 years longer than on the other. We need to start addressing that now, and not bickering and fighting amongst ourselves about where the best place is. <coughs> Let's not give it to our Park Hospital. This is about giving to our patients, our population, our 300,000 population. And I'm very, very happy to listen all proposals and Dr. Mancani said that he wished that we would listen to proposals and I certainly and he knows that I'm more than happy to hear proposals because what we have are two proposals but if somebody can come with other alternatives 
This is a listening and a consultation exercise, and we need to listen to that. And I've already said that at one of the GP evening meetings that we've held, and we've two further GP evening meetings coming up. And I'm happy to take on board concepts and ideas. I can't promise to give everything to everybody, and I've said that at the various different public events that we've had. But what we need to do is listen and take on board what people are saying. We've talked about clinical working groups and they are starting to be put in place so that we can look at that workforce issue. You mentioned nursing, nursing staff and shortages of nurses and that is something that we are working at, not just within the CCG but across our partner organisations as well with World Community Foundation Trust and with World University Teaching Hospital. And as Jackie said also, there are meetings about transport, whether it should be now or next March or whatever it is, it is essential that we have those meetings. And finally, I'd like to say that we need to separate <coughs> our Park site from where the University Teaching Hospital. It is one element of the Arrow Park site, but the location of an urgent treatment centre on that site doesn't mean all the money is going to prop up where the University Teaching Hospital. Sorry, Anthony, but that's not what it means. It's about when women undertake value stream analysis and consultation and workshops over many, many years, and I was the clinical lead for urgent care before becoming the medical director. When we looked at that footfall, it was to the Arab Park site. And so looking at the geography of Wirral and looking at the additional 27 measures which NHS in England mandate, that was the reason why Governing Body chose the Arab Park site with the location of the urgent treatment centre but not to put more money into World University Teaching Hospital. So my plea this evening is that we have an open mind, that we are comfortable in our difficult discussions and our cons consultation. We can agree to disagree without being disagreeable. But what we ultimately have to remember is what we want to deliver is an equitable, seamless service for our patients, whether they live at the north end of Birkenhead, whether they live in Easton, whether they live in Wallasey, or whether they live in Heswell. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you very much. Anybody else want to sum up? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. I'm conscious of time, so I've just got half a dozen uh, key points. Uh, Clearly, there's an awful lot of information uh, presented this evening, so just to come back on a few of those key areas, recognising the complexity of the picture. Um, a &E growth we shared around what uh, the 4% and the 27%. And just to clarify that position, we do absolutely count and monitor what we call type 1 um, activity, which is those patients who have an acute, potentially life threatening need. We also count type 3, which are people of a lower level need who could um, quite easily be seen by primary care, GP, or nurse. Um, just to clarify the two positions, because we have not misled anybody, it's all in the information that's been circulated. Um, A and &E, &E growth locally is about 4% for type 1, for that high complexity of people. 27% um, refers to what is the national position for the type 1 and type 3, which includes the primary care um, activity as well. So they're, they're different, it's not an apples and apples, it's apples and pears comparison. Uh, and that, that information is contained in the case of change. Our current local AE growth for Wirral, for type 1, um, is 6%. So you can see it's that complexity of people presenting that it's given us a big challenge. Uh, type 3 um, in Swaney has plateaued. Um, the data um, show, shared does confirm, as we've said, that AE is, is struggling. And we've all heard tonight from a variety of people uh, that's a proposition that we need to do something about. Um, we do count and capture and report type 3, Dr McGarvey shared that the local walking centres and minor injuries, uh, type 3 activity is, is, is helping out uh, the overall performance, that's true, but we're still falling below the 95%, so we do, we do need to do something. Um, currently, uh, looking at last year, 6,000 people were redirected to A&E from the walking centres and minor injuries. Approximately 1,000 of those people were for fracture-related um, need, usually requiring further x-ray or, or um, clinical intervention. I think it's really important to state that there is an absolute variation in the services provided. We've said that tonight. And that includes what is provided across the local walking centres and minor injuries. So it's not a total level playing field when you're trying to compare unit costs. Um, 
and we have presented the information fairly. It's out there in the activity suite. Uh, it's for you to have a look at the variation and, and differences that we've provided the information on. Um, just a couple of things that, that may be helpful for people. Um, when we have looks at the minor injury um, growth and position, um, when you look at the last three years, for the minor injury services, um, there is an 8% reduction in, in attendances at the two of the minor injury units. Um, Miriam, in fairness, has a flat line, um, but, but reduction of 8% in three years for the other two. When you look at the walking centre position over the past five years, there's been a 4% reduction in, in attendances. Um, a couple of other things that may be helpful. Um, currently, 47% of Miriam minor injury unit is for wound dressing care and paediatric services. And I think Dr. McBarney went on to say that patients have access, need to have access to their own GP. 22% of the minor injury users uh, using attending Miriam are, are from that that one in practice, 38,000. So it is a complex picture. We need to be careful we don't get drawn without looking at the whole and considering the total um, challenge that we have. And I would agree with Paul's comments. This is a, a, an opportunity for us to work with everyone to get this right for urgent care. We've got one pot of money. We are severely challenged as a system that is no different than the national position. And we have to really consider the whole um, in order to move forward in a, in a, in a properly considered manner. Um, final couple of points. There was a comment made about saving community services. Well, the most local service is a GP or nurse. And we are not, absolutely not, uh, disinvesting from that. We have to try to articulate a replacement offer of the walking centre um, activity by saying we want to continue to provide the two biggest reasons for that activity children's service, walkable, walking and bookable, the wound and dressing care, making that bookable. But then, because of this direction about investing, this 1.8 million in additional primary care, GP and nurse activity, same day appointments will be made available. That is not taken away from the community, it's just a slightly different offer. And if you were to do nothing but just put in the 1.8 million, then actually we've over provided in the community, but we have not addressed those growing challenges of the accident and emergency department and really addressed that growing number of frail older people with very complex needs. We do need more specialist intervention support. Finally, uh, just on the finance and, and workforce, we've presented in the information shared the cost envelope. It is really challenging to get more detail at this stage. There is a fixed cost within accident and emergency departments that's been, that's been put out there for people. 